Hello again, Michael Friedrich here from beautiful, snowy, and icy North Carolina. I have a new product to review today. Well, at least it is new to me. I have the sample pressed into my Captain's Choice loading bowl. Um, I received this from a colleague at work. It is the Baster and Man Lavanil. But before we go any further with this video, I just need to make sure I can explain one simple thing. If you are concerned that this is a fake set and this is part of the grand conspiracy, much like the moon landings, if you believe that those were faked, not a set. This is actually my real bathroom. I know that it doesn't look like it changes all the time back there, but of course, why would it? It's just my bathroom. So for the person who had the Doubting Thomas friends, I put a note up there for you, DL, this one's for you. All right, so today, Barrister and Man La Vanille. Um, I'll talk about the scent when I actually get into the shave. Let's talk about the rest of the products I'll be using. I'm returning today to a classic Gillette Super Speed, the black tip. The date code on this is W3. That puts it as 1951 Q3. Still in fantastic shape. This came in two different versions. There is a stainless steel handle, I believe, and this is the aluminum handle. So the handle is short. It's definitely relatively thin. Uh, it is a bit head heavy. It's not unbalanced, but it is definitely head heavy. I'll be shaving today with a Persona Lab blade. This will be the sixth shave on this blade. I'm not even really sure I remember where I got this. This may have actually come in a bundle with some other super speed razors. Um, it's in fantastic shape. Um, it works, still works exceedingly well. Um, yeah, just a beautiful vintage razor. Today's brush, for a variety of reasons, is going to be the Rod Neep Lignum Vitae Custom Bore. Just a wonderful, wonderful brush. Um, as I go through the shave today, um, I'll just go through the story of how my Samoog 1250 met its untimely demise. There were some questions raised on YouTube about exactly what happened there. Um, I've already wet my face. I'm going to go ahead and start loading the brush. So the Barrister and Manso, La Vanille, yeah, the, the first, the, the primary notes that you smell are lavender, vanilla, the cedar, wood, but it's, this is not one of those soaps where you sort of just reduce the scent down to three or four base notes. It's a very, very complex scent. And the beauty of this is how it all comes together. The soap smells amazing and in fact if you didn't even know what was in there and all you said was here just take the sample try it see what you think see what you think of the smell i think that you would you just be blown away the scent is absolutely fantastic this is still the old the original base this is not the glissant base it is a very thirsty soap um, it tells you on the website for example um, that you need to use a lot of water the bore brush is wet but not soaking wet um, as you can see brush does splay very easily um, it's got a good backbone but it still opens up quite a bit it's one of the sort of one of the benefits of the bore brushes i think is that sort of the combination of softness and firmness um, it's got a good backbone but the tips do splay i'm just going to load this make sure i get a lot of soap loaded here there's no reason to underload this is the the last bit of the sample that i have it's easily lasted the week and for the person who sent it to me um, Brian, thank you very much. It was a very uh, a very generous amount that you sent, so thank you for that. Um, I've not really tried these soaps before. Barrister and Matt, I've tried the Colombe Russe soap, which was fantastic. I don't remember it being quite at the same uh, performance level as this. So you can see what's happening, building a very nice sort of creamy lather in the bowl, just loading the brush. Um, I will certainly use all of that lather. That is plenty. I'm going to wet my face and start building the ladder. Now one of the other comments that the, uh, the same person who made this crack about my bathroom being a fake set, apparently when other people, when he's been showing people these videos, there's been some consternation about the number of passes and are there really people that have to shave with a three pass shave because after all, what idiot would do that? 
me, and loads and loads of other people. It's important to remember that you are shaving with a single edge razor. You know, you're not going to be somehow magically because of that removing all the hair in your face with a single swipe. It doesn't work that way. You're reducing, 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 and each pass becomes closer and closer. Um, and that's why you shave with three passes. You can shave with two and get a very, very good shave. There are certainly some days during the week when I do that. Press for time, or skin just doesn't feel up to a third pass. Lathers flying everywhere. I'm gonna add a little bit of water because this is a very thirsty soap, but I will say that even at this stage, it feels very, very slick. I've been incredibly impressed by just how slick this soap is and you can definitely tell during the lathering it's going to go from a bit of a thicker thicker paste and you can sort of see it happening down here in my neck already absolutely beautiful dense creamy lather and you can see for the bore brush it holds together very well but when you exert a little bit of pressure it splays and opens up i'm a big fan of the bore brush and i'm glad to see that they're are people who are giving them another try. Maybe a big fan of the synthetics, which I completely understand. They have a lot of benefits and advantages, but don't forget about the bore. All right, just a touch more water. Well, there we go. That looks fantastic. Scent strength, by the way, remains very good. You can still really smell it coming off the brush and as I said at the beginning, it's not a simple scent where you smell the lavender or the vanilla or the cedar when you smell them all sort of combined on top of this kind of exotic base scent. It just smells fantastic. Not much more to be said about that. Smell, the scent of it is absolutely top notch. All right, here we go. The handle for me on this is a little thin and a little short but you can definitely understand the need for that if you're thinking about trying to produce razors when there's perhaps a shortage of raw materials and you need to be able to make, make them in volume. So you'd find ways obviously to keep production volume high. Use less material per razor. Very, very easy to use. Like I said, it is definitely head heavy and as you use it, you'll definitely feel that. And that's in part because the aluminum handle itself is so light. Sixth shave on this blade, no issues, no tugging, no roughness. This is the first, I think the first Persona Lab that I've ever used. Very nice. Blade comes across as sharp without being kind of bitey or overly aggressive. There is a slight overhang. So right there, just have to be a little cautious. Soap is gloriously slick too. I think what I'll do is I'll actually keep this blade going for the next set of shades for this week. Um, I'm not sure what razor, razor I'll be using next, but if that blade continues to be that smooth, I'll just keep using it. We'll see how far it goes. All right, rinse off a little bit. Get the bottom of my neck there as well. All right, pass number two. You can see there is still plenty in the brush. Okay, let's talk about the Samoog 1250. So. As I've explained previously, 
entirely my own stupid mistake. The brush is uh, comes in a very nice wooden handle, easy to hold. I love the shape. I love having the, I mean, I'm a big fan of the wooden handles anyway. Um, the brush broke in very quickly. I had no issues with that. I've not had trouble really breaking in bar brushes. My, my technique is basically just use them every day for a while until they're broken in. It takes a couple weeks, um, but it generally it, it goes pretty quick. The first, the first couple lathers, the first three, five, seven, whatever it is, those do seem like they struggle a little bit. Just power through that. Oh God, this just feels so good going on. This soap is absolutely stellar. And if the glissant base, which I've not used, is better than this, well, that's gonna be a real treat. So for the 1250, what I was doing was I was soaking it as I had soaked that other brush this morning in the apothecary mug. But what I had in this mug was also a hard puck of soap, which may have been a Queen Charlotte soap, might have been the Check and Speak 88, I don't remember what it was, but I used to use one soap from beginning to end. I would start a soap, I would use it until it was gone, and then move on to the next one. That's obviously not the case now. But what I would do is I would soak that 1250 in this mug with the soap puck in the bottom, I would fill it with hot water, and I would leave the brush soaking in the mug with the soap. And soaking it in that soapy water, that hot soapy water, it just undid the knot. It just ruined the glue and it began to fall apart. And then the entire knot itself also fell out. So the knot itself came apart and the knot just fell out of the handle. And that, as I said, is just my own stupid mistake because soaking in hot, soapy water day after day after day just ruined it. So don't make that same mistake. If you're soaking your brush, soak it in a mug where there's only the water. Don't stick it in the same mug that uh, has your soap in it. All right, this is the Across the Grain Pass. Yeah, just beautiful, friction-free, so slick. Really, really liking the soap. I know there's a number of new B&M products coming out or some limited editions or seasonal offerings. Have to keep my eye open for those. But in any case, for sure, one of the soaps with the Glissant base will be on the uh, on the list for this year, for sure. Yeah, for both the width, the grain, and across the grain pass, this razor is really effortless in a lot of ways. Easy to use, overall good results. We're just there, for example, just have to watch because of the overhang, but not bad. Combination of this soap and the blade and this razor is just absolutely wonderful. One of the other questions I think people have is, does it really take you that long to shave every day? Well, the answer is no, of course not. These videos take long because I'm talking through the products, I'm demonstrating what I'm doing, I'm trying to make sure people can get a good feel for how the products work or what they look like. I'm trying to go through and describe the sense. There's a host of reasons why these take longer than a normal morning shave. But yes, I do go through all of the same routine. I build a lather, I go through three passes, not every day, but most days. Um, you know, when shaving is enjoyable and fun, you don't feel any need to really rush through it. And so I just don't. All right, I've scooped out the remaining lather from the bowl. You can see how well that's held together. There's no dissipation, no breakdown. That is still beautiful, dense, creamy lather. Let's go ahead and just build that again. I've added no water to the brush. You can just see see how just how thick and well put together that is. The bar brushes, at least this one is 
soft with good backbone. The tips are really soft. It's not scrubby or scratchy at all. It holds a ton of leather. Yeah, and the reason I came into this brush is that Rod Neep took pity on me and felt bad for the loss of my beloved 1250, which was a brush I really did love. It just, it was broken in beautifully. I loved the handle, loved everything about it. And then I just ruined it like a dope. And he kindly offered to make me a, a replacement, which I was very happy to accept. I already had one of his brushes, which was a, uh, you know, the small hourglass um, olive wood badger. So very, very glad to be able to get a, uh, a board from him as well. Okay, against the grain pass. Here's where this razor takes a bit of a turn for me. With the grain, across the grain, no issues. But. There are two spots where this is not as not as efficient as it could be. Overall, a very comfortable razor, easy to use. Yeah, the handle's a little thin, a little light, but you know, in the scheme of things, that's really just not that bad. But there are two spots, particularly right here, where this razor is not very comfortable on the against the grain pass. And then for some reason, on the underside of my chin struggles a little bit in terms of efficiency. Have to watch the angle. Just spend a bit, just, it's not quite as uh, sort of effortless. The soap makes it incredibly easy to buff, by the way, because it is very, very slick. Yeah, I've had a couple shaves during the week where I thought I did a pretty good job underneath, but even now I can still feel it's rough there a little bit. Not sure why in that particular spot might just be you know a blade angle or something but in that particular area it takes more work to get a good close shave yeah beautiful slickness there Yep, yeah, that's better. Just takes a little, a little more work, a little extra care and attention. And then just down here, it's just not as comfortable on that against the grain pass, which scheme of things, a very, very minor knock. Again, if this is one of those razors where you say, look, this is it, this is the only one you get to use for the rest of your life, I'd be perfectly happy. All right, three passes, done. Yeah, let's just touch it up right at the bottom of my neck right there. Excellent residual slickness on that soap. You wet your face again, still very slick. Um, it does not rinse off immediately. It does take a bit of work to rinse. Ah, have to towel the rest off. There we go. Well, that is over two days of growth, gone. Another wonderful, smooth, easy shave. Ah, all right, well. Post-shave skin feel on that from that soap. 
Again, I have no heat, no irritation, no real tightness in the skin. <sighs> Lingering scent, no, not really. Not off the soap, at least. Once you rinse your face, it's really, it's really gone. All right, I'm gonna close it off with what is the last remaining dose of my Colon Russe. I, I didn't realize I was so low on this, but it, this is going to be pretty much the end of the bottle. Now, I know that there is an aftershave, a lavanil aftershave. I just don't have that. But funny thing is, this actually is not a bad pairing at all. It's another, another kind of very dense, complex scent. All right, let me just... Yep, that's it. End of the bottle. Go crazy on that last little bit. Mmm. Whew, man, that just... Wonderful, wonderful scent. So now, I have the Cologne Rose soap and none of the aftershave left. Whatever will I do to remedy that situation? Hmm, I wonder. Okay, no aftershave bomb for today. I'm gonna to leave it right there. Man, another fantastic Sunday shave. Let's go ahead and cover the uh, cover the product again. Well, start off with the Super Speed Black Tip Aluminum Handle, date code W3, 1951, quarter three. Still in fantastic shape. Great, easy razor to use. Relatively thin handle little bit heavy towards the head, but still very easy to use. Simple, easy, clean shave, um, and still works fantastically. Nothing wrong with the mechanism. Uh, wonderful razor, very glad I have it. The brush, of course, the Rod Neep Lignum Vitae bore. Still tons of lather in there. Man, I think there's another pass in there, easy. Love this brush. Big handle, heavy, very large knot. Um, I know when I first got it, wow, that just, it seemed, Kind of overly large it broke in very quickly and is absolutely one of my favorite brushes it's just fantastic now you may not be able to see but there's still a small layer of lava Neal in there i may hold on to that uh, maybe not we'll see what happens will i be ordering a full-size tub of this pretty likely the scent is fantastic and if i can get this in the new base if the new base performs better than that and that soap already performs fantastically it is incredibly creamy slick lather it is definitely thirsty soap but that's not really a problem you have plenty of water at hand just keep working it you're going to get a fantastic as you can see a nice dense slick lather out of it just absolutely wonderful just can't say enough about that so fantastic love it and then to close off i think i still have a tiny dribble in here actually ooh, i might have enough for one one more use out of this cologne rose. There's actually a little more in there than I thought I'd have left. So maybe I've locked out. I got one more, one more shot in. But that's the cologne rose for the aftershave for today. Well, I think that pretty much brings it to a close on this sunny, but pretty cold, snowy, icy day. I want to say thank you once again so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments, please, as always, feel free to leave those against the video. And until next time, goodbye.